Oh my god, we might not be able to overclock our graphics cards in the future. Let's talk about it. Okay, boys, I gotta power through this one because I'm not feeling the best. I think I picked something up, but we got a lot of news to go over, and I know nobody cares, so let's get right into this one. So, first of all, yes, you heard me correctly. In the future, it could be very difficult to overclock our graphics cards if this story turns out to be true. Now, this all started over on a videocards.com article where they said, quote, MSI Afterburner software without MSI support project is probably dead and then WCCF tech made some updates on this so I'm going to go ahead and read their article and then we'll talk about it so according to WCCF tech quote as revealed by the developer of MSI's afterburner utility Alex C. Nikolaychuk sorry if I butchered that aka unwinder over at guru 3d forums the project has run into a funding issue due to the ongoing conflict international banks have seized swift operations in Russia and US plus its allies have proposed a tech ban on Russia as as such, MSI is in a tough spot when it comes to providing the necessary funds to Alexi. And then here's what he actually had to say over on the forums. Quote, no need to be impatient. It just demotivates to do anything and MSI Afterburner Project is probably dead. So yeah, that's definitely very, very concerning. But some of you listening might be asking, why would this mean that GPU overclocking in the future is going to be very difficult? And that's actually a very good question. And here's exactly why. So if MSI Afterburner stopped being updated, you're essentially relying on basically a couple of other tools from companies that I don't think are going to be, at least in my opinion, a reliable source for updates. First of all, you have the EVGA overclocking software that they make, and you know, in theory, it is a pretty decent overclocking software. However, EVGA no longer makes video cards for NVIDIA anymore, and they don't make any AMD cards either right now, so I'm not sure if they're going to actually continue to update that tool, and I don't necessarily see why they would in the coming years, so that's already another red flag. So there, now you have the MS MSI Afterburner gone, you have the EVGA one gone. Now what else do we have left? Well, we do have Asus with their GPU Tweak 3. However, I have noticed that Asus has been dropping a lot of their software recently as well. It seems like a lot of the old software that I knew them for, they essentially aren't updating them anymore. So I'm actually very, very worried about that one as well. And in fact, even if they do continue to update their GPU Tweak 3, which it looks like the last update that I saw was all the way back in October, it could be a situation where new video cards come out and maybe a eventually it does get updated so that there is some sort of support without MSI and without EVGA. You're relying on ACES to update as quickly as possible and there could be situations where you don't get stuff like voltage control or fine tune control on new specific graphics cards for quite some time. So obviously that could be a major issue if new video cards come out and it's months and months before you actually get full overclocking capabilities out of those cards. Now maybe you could do something through Nvidia's control panel in the future much like what we have on AMD's control panel but as of right now, essentially, yes, if MSI Afterburner stopped getting updated, this would be a very bad thing for gamers, and it would be a very bad thing specifically for overclockers, as the other tools out there just simply aren't going to be a great option in the future, at least in my opinion. So I was very, very worried when I first heard this. However, I do want to let you guys know there has been an update, and it looks like MSI is trying to get this thing updated. Now, whether or not they will be able to continue to work on it is still a little bit up in the air, but hopefully this will actually actually get resolved as it looks like over on the WCCF Tech article they did do an update and over on Twitter actually Hassan who works for WCCF Tech said quote got an update from MSI regarding this our project marketing and accounting team are dealing with the problem now due to the conflict our payment couldn't transfer to the author's bank account successfully we're still keeping in touch with him and figuring out how to solve this so hopefully they do find a way around this because again this would be a very dire situation if MSI Afterburner kind of goes the way of the dodo, I would be very, very concerned about GPU overclocking going into the future. So again, hopefully they get this resolved because otherwise, yeah, I'm getting a little bit hot under the collar. But the next quick update I want to bring to you guys is it looks like AMD's finally going to be getting some AV1 support in OBS. So if you're someone out there who has an RX 7000 series card, this will definitely be great news for you. And you'll have to let me know in the comments below if you get a chance to try it out, how well it works for you. But I'll have a link in the 
description to this article if you want to learn more. But now let's move on to, yes, there could be a couple of new video cards coming out from NVIDIA very, very soon. The question is, will they be appropriately priced or will they be grossly overpriced like the 4070 Ti and 4080? Well, only time will tell, but according to a videocards.com article, here's what they had to say about these new GPUs. Quote is reported by WCCF Tech that NVIDIA is currently working on 8104-250 and 8104-250. 4-251 and if we scroll down here we can see that these two new GPUs are very interesting as it looks like they do have a lower TDP of 200 watts and the first one will apparently start production by the second half of February and the second one will start production by the second half of March so that's actually going to be coming very very soon guys considering we're already in January so we're talking about just roughly around a month away a little over a month away until the production of that first GPU now whether or not production means like release date I'm not entirely sure on that because sometimes they word these things weirdly especially if it's coming from a source that isn't a native English speaker so I don't know 100% for sure but if it's production you will have to wait a little bit longer but if we take a look at the chart here that video cards put together we can see that they're actually slotting it in between the 4070 and the 4060 Ti which makes me kind of wonder you know could this be a desktop part or could it maybe be some sort of a mobile part I'm not entirely sure 200 watts seems a little bit too high for a mobile part, but again, nothing is confirmed at this point, and this actually does make me think that's very, very strange that video card seems to be slotting them between them and not saying that they are the 4070 and the 4060 Ti. Originally, I thought, hey, this is going to be 4070 and 4060 Ti, but for some reason, video card seems to think that maybe that isn't the case, at least looking at this chart here. I'm going to say 4070 and 4060 Ti still, but if this does turn out to be true and they're slotted in between those, maybe NVIDIA is looking for ways to get gamers some cheaper versions of the 104. For GPU, which, hey, that could definitely be good news for gamers if you're essentially going to get a slightly cut down 4070 for much, much cheaper. I'd absolutely love to see that, but if that does turn out to be the case, it'd be interesting to see what they end up naming these cards. I mean, is it going to be like a uh, 4070 Lite or something like that, or are they going to name a 4070 or 4070 Super sometime in the future? I'm not sure what is going on here, guys, because it, <laughs> at this point, you would have how many cards on the 104? You'd have the 4070 Ti, the 47 and then two more and then they're saying that the 4060 Ti is actually going to be on the 106 and not the 104 so very very interesting stuff there and we don't really have any other information on the specs and to be honest with you guys you'll know that I do tend to actually go ahead and put together charts and give my guesses on what video cards are going to be coming out in the future and hey not to pat myself on the back too much but this time around I actually did predict a lot of them but this one I'm having a hard time predicting what exactly these video cards are going to be I heard about stuff like the 4070 Ti and the 480 and all that stuff a long long time ago I have not heard about these two cards so it'll be very interesting to see what Nvidia is playing at with these two new secret GPUs but hey that's just what I think. Do you think the overclocking is in trouble? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.